Hello, this is video number 10 in my series of videos on real analysis proofs. My eighth video on fundamental inequalities, we're looking at the generalized triangle inequality on n-dimensional Euclidean space, Rn, in this video. Three videos ago, we looked at the real number case of the triangle inequality on the real line one-dimensional triangle inequality. One video ago, uh, we looked at the vector version of the triangle inequality, that if a and b are vectors, then the magnitude or length or norm, all three words are okay, of the sum a plus b is less than or equal to the magnitude of a plus the magnitude of b. There was a video in between where we talked about something called the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which we needed to help us prove this. This video is about um, the generalized version of this case in Rn. a and b were n-dimensional vectors here. Um, and what does that mean here? Well, we're going to use induction, mathematical induction, to verify that if we have m vectors in Rn, so n is some positive integer, m is possibly some other positive integer, then you got that the magnitude of the sum a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 plus am is less than or equal to the sum of the magnitudes of the individual vectors. So it's an, it's an induction proof, as you might guess, and it's fairly easy. So this should be fairly short. Let's go ahead and look at the proof right away. All right, with induction, how do you do it? You've got a base case. You try to show what you want to show is true for that base case. Then you have what's called an inductive hypothesis or an inductive step. You assume that this is true for some fixed positive integer m. And then, based on those things, you show that it's true for the next positive integer. So what is the base case here? The base case, as it often is, is the case where m equals 1. Though you might think, okay, is that really the base case in this situation? Because the triangle inequality is always about adding together um, two or more vectors, not just one vector by itself. But it is okay to do the m equals 1 case here. Obviously, and this really is obvious, the magnitude of any vector by itself, I'll call that vector a1, is less than or equal to its own magnitude, because it equals it. If two things are equal, then one is less than or equal to the other, and vice versa. So the base case is obvious. What is the inductive hypothesis? It's that um, what we want to show is true for some fixed positive integer assume, let's not use the letter m, let's use a different letter like k, assume that this inequality, the, tr the generalized triangle inequality, is true when I have k terms in the sum for some fixed but unspecified natural number k. For some k in the set of natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. You can also think of this as, as the set of positive and in integers, z plus. You don't have to write both things like I'm doing. You could just write one or the other. Apparent that we're not, we haven't proved what we want to prove in saying this. What well, we're trying to prove that this is true for all positive and integers m. That's not explicitly stated. It's an implicit assumption. You're trying to show that this is true for all positive integers m. Here we are assuming this is true for some positive integer k. And then we want to show that from this assumption and possibly some other things, it follows that it's true for the next integer k plus 1. All right, so that's what we do next. Then if we've got a k plus first term, so we have k plus 1 terms in the sum. Let me write that like this. I want to show that it follows um, that this is less than or equal to this kind of expression, except the last term is going to be k plus 1. How do you do that? Well, it's, again, fairly simple. For extra emphasis, this is not really a necessary step, but for extra emphasis, let me use parentheses. Let me use the associative property for vector addition. And write parentheses around the first k terms 
and then treat the last term, the k plus first term, by itself. That emphasizes that even though I have k plus 1 vectors here, I can really think of this as the sum of two vectors. This vector, which is formed by adding k vectors together, and this vector. I can now therefore use the ordinary triangle inequality, that form of it right there, where I have two vectors that are being added, to say that this is less than or equal to the magnitude of a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 plus ak plus the magnitude of ak plus 1. Okay, that's by the ordinary triangle inequality, which I like to abbreviate like this. Be careful, that's not a delta, okay, it's a triangle. And in the triangle inequality, it's always a less than or equal to, but when I abbreviate it, I put a not equal to. That's by the ordinary triangle inequality. When you use induction, you have to use your inductive hypothesis somewhere, otherwise you wouldn't use induction. Now we can use this inductive hypothesis to say that this part is less than or equal to that, which basically brings us to the end. Maybe for extra emphasis, we use parentheses again. Not that you really have to. The associated property is often considered so obvious that we don't have to mention it. Technically, it should be mentioned, but we get a little sloppy sometimes. For extra emphasis, this is by the inductive hypothesis. And that basically means we're done. I can get rid of the parentheses now, and I can say this is equal to the magnitude of a1 plus the magnitude of a2 plus etc. I'll just go ahead and write the last one, plus at the end the magnitude of ak plus 1. So I have verified the base case. I had an inductive hypothesis, and I showed that what I wanted to show is true for the next integer. I was assuming this was true for some k. The principle of mathematical induction that now apply, implies that this is true for all m, for all positive integers m, or I could have called them k as well. I will go ahead and write that out, but before I do, let me also mention that even though the base case felt trivial and it didn't feel like the triangle inequality, it is good enough. You don't have to do the m equals 2 case for the base case, because in this expression right here, k could be 1. We could have just one term here. And then that thing with one term, an a1, say, would be less than or equal to itself in magnitude. All right. We did use the ordinary triangle inequality there in the inductive hypothesis here. Here's your final sentence, which is kind of optional. Therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, let me go back to using M now. The inequality where I use an M for my number of terms is true for all positive integers m. Emphasis on the for all. Upside down a means for all. For all natural numbers m, which are also positive integers, again, you don't have to write both things. And we are done. That finishes the proof. This last sentence could be considered to be optional.